that up. Yeah, just hold it. Yeah. Coach for Kids, 
We're beginning to get them some of them piled up over here. So uh, bring these coats in as you go through your closets. Take a $20 bill, give it to Sherry or Jenna, and she'll buy a young coat for you or a little coat for you. But, but bring those coats in. We'll be giving, giving those out probably the first part of November. Anything else going on we need to mention? Why Sherry? I don't know. She's better than, than uh, Peggy. <laughs> I wanted to know what a young coat was. Well, I meant for, you know, young young kids. I'm, I'm sorry. Anything else going on? Yes, short meeting. Yes, thank you. We need to have a short board meeting. About five minutes is all we need. So if you're a part of the board, we're going to meet inside the, the uh, area over here uh, just shortly after church. Five minutes, okay? So we do need you there. Anything else going on we need to mention we've overlooked? Enjoy the music. Get into the mood. Worship through your music. And have a wonderful night in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity as we come into your presence. I thank you, Father, that we can come as a family and feeling, uh, feeling your touch, your need, your encouragement upon us. Father, just, uh, just bless this service. May it be a time of joy. A uh, time of refreshing, just refilling our hearts and our souls. It's in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us and join us? <laughs>
On 
same age. Mary and Jennifer. <laughs> Mary is just a couple of days older than Jennifer. <laughs> Anybody else? I fed the wild at heart out of the prison yesterday. They had me prepare for 80. I thought I was. I think we actually fed about 65, and I almost ran out of food. Those men ate. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to leave the floor because I have a 24-year-old great-grandson. So, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> on the 24th, we will have been married 13 years. Oh, wow. Y'all are concerned, David. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Okay. All right. <laughs> My granddaughter, Jordan, is her birthday today. I had a wonderful time with my brother and his three of his grandchildren last week. Um, it's quite sort of quiet after they left. <laughs> my work in Padre finally got the insurance to pay for an MRI in the for over a year. Finally got through. He has a cyst going down his spine. X ray his shoulder and shows that I go back down and see how far down it is. Sounds real serious. I don't know that. Okay. And Miss Alice is scheduled on her surgery to August the 3rd. Yes, sir. Jennifer comes home on Friday. I've been gone for almost three weeks. Very exciting. The traffic is good, yeah. Also, I have a puppy. Got one leg. Well, I got two. I might keep one. This isn't crazy. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> They're on there. You may need them. <laughs> what kind Three. of puppy? Half American Bulldog, half. It's a half a dog. Finch jump. What do you want for them? Come and get it. You'll never sell them, though. You got to put a price on them. That's what the guy told me. Have you noticed how much fun we have? <laughs> how much laughter we have? Joy we have? Have you noticed the situations that we ask for? It's you know, it's, you know, it's traveling mercy. It's you know, just a wonderful time with family and birthdays and you know. It, there's joy here. There's joy. And I'm saying there's joy in the Lord. Nothing wrong with having a good time. But we're joying in the Lord. And that's what it's about. I thank you for your joy. Let us pray. Fathers, we come before you. We just utter these situations or, or things that's happening in our life. Whether it be a growth on the spine, a young man losing his job, and or the anticipation of looking for a job or retiring. Celebrating a great time with brother and kids. Father, I thank you for anniversaries that are being celebrated. For birthdays that have been in the last few days and coming up. Father, I thank you for the joy that you've put in this place. But Father, even with the joy, keeping our hearts and our minds, it's about Christ. <clears throat> it's about what Christ has done for us. So I pray, Father, that you touch these lives that have been mentioned, this compadre. I pray, Father, that you just you bless these, these young people that are traveling home that have been away. Father, just, just touch lives that were not even mentioned today, but someone had a thought, someone had a problem, someone had a joy. And Father, I pray that you just bless this service, bless this day, bless each and every one of us here, and, and just help us to be the people of the church that you want us to be. May people see and come and find that joy that we have. 
Father, thank you for allowing us to share. Thank you for allowing us to even come into your presence. Even open our mouths and speak to you. Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. The one who died on the cross for each and every one of us. Whether we accept that or not, he died. But Father, remind us that on the third day he rose. And that Christ lives in each and every one of us. Father, I thank you for that gift. It's in your Son's name. Father, I ask now that you teach us to pray. The way Jesus taught His disciples when they begin to try to understand how do we pray? What do we say? And Jesus told him, He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we'll take our morning off. this gift. Bless the giver. Bless those that are unable to give for whatever reason. Your son's name.
something and you know it, it's kind of shady and it's not just right it's not good it's so easy to get inside this but sometimes when we get inside this in our life and we're going around and around and around it's so easy to get into but you're going down it's caught that's the way evil does you sometimes bad things whatever you consider bad things Sometimes it's just a little bit. Sometimes it's just so easy to get there. But once you get there, you're coming out. It's, a, it's attractive. It's enticing. It'll draw you in. But then all of a sudden, you're caught. And you're going out. That's the way things sometimes in life are. Be. I know you guys are not involved in this. Whether it be a little bit of drugs, whatever it is that's tempting you, you get inside. It's easy to get there. It's easy to start. But then there's no way out. With that. You know, I heard a statement from my grandson the other day. I don't know how, we, how this thing even came up from that Jacob, the 15 year old. <clears throat> Something was said about marijuana. And he said, I don't, I've, done, I've never done that. But he said, I've got a lot of friends that do. He said, most everybody in school is doing it. It's just a little. And then the first thing you know, 
know you're down here. That's the way it starts. Little things. And then it gets pretty big. Don't get caught in the trap. Don't get caught in a situation that you can't get out of. Because once you get in there, you've got it out. And it's not going to be the same. Does that scare you that a 15 year old told his grandfather everybody's using Does it scare you? Yeah. Yeah, does it surprise you? School is not like it used to be, is it? But we're talking about a big high school. That means that I've never done that. Now I said, Jacob? I said, I never did that when I was young either. Don't get caught in that trap. There's just no way out. No, way, no good way out. Don't get in the phone. Ma'am? Don't get in the phone. Don't get in the phone. We used to run cattle during my pasture. And first thing you know, there was a narrow area that we'd taken into. They were ready to go. And all of a sudden, it narrowed down to about 12 feet, and they were caught. There was nowhere to go, and they were pinned. That's the way life is. It's just fun. It's kind of easy to get into. And then the first thing you know, you're there. You can't get out. Don't get caught. Anybody want parts? Father, I thank you for these young people. I pray over them. I pray that you put people in front of them that will be, uh, have to be uh, examples for them. And Father, that they are examples for some of our young people. Father, just bless these, bless their life, decisions they make. In the days ahead, in your son's name. Amen. You came down here this time, didn't you?
really impressed with the workmanship on that little piece of that little mm -hmm. statue or whatever miniature lighthouse. And it got me thinking. Uh, I've kept it all these years, and I was reading an article. In, does anyone want to see Country World uh, newspaper? You know, you can buy it in vending machines. Jim sees it. Uh, anybody else? Carl sees it. You know, it has a lot of news about farming and about rural stuff. And recently, just in the last week or two, they had an article on lighthouses, and it said that. Come August the 7th, it'll be National Lighthouse Day. Oh. And it went on to explain that in 1789, when this country was young, the government, the Congress, authorized uh, that the government would henceforth, from that day forward, build and maintain the lighthouses in this country. And as far as I know, I still do that. The article didn't say that ever ceased. It did indicate that dependence on lighthouses is somewhat reduced with GPS technology and even radar has eliminated some of the benefits of a lighthouse. But they still need lighthouses. And some of you have heard of Dwight Moody, a great preacher in, in the early 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s. He was he was probably the most famous preacher in America. A Billy Graham hmm. preached all over the world. He was invited to preach all over the world. He wasn't ordained. He was a lay preacher. Well, Dwight Moody one time made a sermon in which he talked about a lighthouse. And he said that there was an actual event that took place near the harbor of Cleveland and that the captain, it was very dark, very stormy, very dark, not even a star was visible. And the captain asked the pilot of the ship if he could see the harbor, the, the light in the lighthouse on the uh, Cleveland Harbor. And he said, yes, sir, I can see it. But I can't see the lower lights at the uh, mouth of the harbor. He said, well, can we make it in? And he said, captain, we must. Else we perish. We have to make it. So, with only the upper light visible, not a star visible for charting or anything, just the upper light of the lighthouse, the lower lights, which normally are required for perfect navigation and a safe harbor, was not visible. One of the people. And Dwight Moody went on to say that we, as Christians, serve as, as the lower lights. God himself will take care of the lighthouse, but we are the lower lights. Hmm. And a guy named P.P. Bliss was in the congregation. And he wrote a song based on that sermon. That sermon. So I mean, you know it is in the Cokesbury hymnal. It's okay to sing. For I live in our Father's mercy. I'm in His lighthouse. Sin has settled. 